Hello everybody, Scott Golden here with the NXT review for the 30th of November 2021. Uh, what a honestly weak show to be perfectly honest, but um, we kind of see that in the in the new way. So, um, cold open, basically live shot of the crowd, uh, and they kind of give the feel it's being joined in progress. Uh, the show opens with a ladder match to, in to determine the... Uh, Persian advantage in the war games match. I, I hate the fact they're doing war games just as a as a stipulation every year. But I mean, again, they're they're playing to the lowest denominator fan that don't care about history. So I guess that's what it is. Uh, things are then put into a pull apart brawl, kind of begin things with a bit of a bang, and then Dakota Kai is joined by Mandy Rose and the NXT Tag Team Champions Gigi Dolan, JC Jane, and uh, they are obviously on the bad woman side of the War Games match. Kaylee Ray is joined by the baby faces of the crowd, including Io Shirai, Raquel Gonzalez, and Cora Jade. Um, a few mom moments into the show, teams meet on the entrance ramp and uh, could turn into a brawl, but then uh, we go into... Kaylee Ray defeating Dakota Kai in a ladder match to win the War Games advantage. Kaylee Ray climbs the ladder and hooking the briefcase, winning the match. And thus they uh, win in that situation. There's a whole bunch of big bumps. The ladder match is also, um, you know, a, a pretty big thing. They do take big bumps, but nothing so out of sorts that it puts them in a negative space to start the match. Um... I mean, they certainly are trying to be striking and very, you know, high-intensity spots. A uh, bunch of double stomps, and uh, there is a brawl that erupts on the ramps. Basically, they start the match off with the brawl. Officials come out separating the two teams, and then Kai is throwing uh, Ray into the ladder once all the teammates are cleared out of the way, and then that leads into the aisle. Kaylee Ray fires up and hits springboards into a flip dive on the outside because we need dives to open wrestling shows. Sure we do. Um, Kylie Ray is on fire, and then Kai sends Ray into the ring steps. Kai goes nuts. She really hasn't found her true gimmick, and I wouldn't imagine she's long for promotion. She's laughing maniacally, and she drags the ladder around. Kylie Ray cuts off. Kai, uh, Kai with a tope suicide to the outside, and then Kai is suplexed into the ladder. She then says some language that wasn't meant for PG television, and then Kai recovers quickly. She and Kylie Ray turn into climbing on the ladder and reaching for the briefcase above her, above Kai's head. Kylie Ray is then doing a face wash, and Ray ends up tied to the tree of woe, and Kai leaps off the top rope, delivering a double stomp to Ray. Match goes through a commercial break with a split screen. Uh, Kai is working the leg as the show comes back. Uh, Kylie Ray counters to deliver a glory bomb and then sends Kai crashing into the announce desk because announcer spots are a big thing. Uh, then... There's a bunch of brawling on top of the ladder in the middle of the ring. Ray takes a bump off the ladder. Kai jumps from the high atop the ladder instead of grabbing the briefcase and hits a double stomp. Uh, Kylie Ray is up quickly and uh, Kai tries a tree of woe on the ladder. Ray then super kicks Kai and then Kylie Ray climbs the ladder to unhook the briefcase. Babyface gets the advantage heading into war games and. Uh, Santa Claus tries to sell us all WrestleMania tickets. Santa must not like us anymore if he wants us to attend a horribly booked WrestleMania, which I'm sure WrestleMania 38 will be. Anyway, Grizzled Young Veterans are trying to break into Briggs and Jensen's locker when uh, Jacket Time stumbles into the scene. Briggs and Jensen walk in. The veterans flee, leaving the Jacket team to look like they did this. Apparently, this is supposed to be comedy. Instead, for me, it's just a waste of time. Uh, not a waste of time, though. Cameron Graham's defeating uh, 
Andre Chase. And Grimes is getting beat up to the comeback and hits cave in for the pinfall victory. Grimes gets a win over a much lesser person, especially where he was earlier in the year. Almost like an old school syndicated squash match. Uh, after this comes another uh, Duke Hudson coming out. Cuts a promo from a hanging over the ring. Grimes looks, uh, looks on Hudson. Then has pictures of Grimes with a bunch of different haircuts. Uh, finally, he comes out and the picture of Grimes with a bald head. And that's kind of the idea in a hair match situation. Grimes then gets angry and tries to shave Chase's head, but Chase's students save Chase. And there we go. Grimes tells Chase that he's going to shave him bald. And uh, that kind of kills the segment. Anyway, ring announcer Alicia Taylor's in the ring with a war, th war game teams called 2.0. We get a promo. This goes too long. And they didn't say anything that isn't worth skipping. They're going to compete in a match uh, against the black and gold team. Apparently, there's a poll online to decide that Braun Breaker winning... Breaker is now set to, to face Johnny Gargano in a ladder match. Old versus new is so WCW 2000. Anyway, Gargano enters the scene, cuts a promo where he calls Breaker the big bad booty nephew. Um, not quite sure where that goes. Uh, obviously, it's Scott Steiner reference, but hey, uh, crowd chants that back to Gargano. Breaker then asks Gargano to leave his team. And in, in the back tonight, making the match just one-on-one. -on -one. And there's basically an agreement to that. Gargano looks to be in the main event tonight, even though he's basically in question with his contract. Anyway, MSK is in a car, and their GPS says they're close to their destination. As they arrive, GPS cusses at them. Um... Uh, and MSK gets out of the car and knocks on the door. They're blinded by the light and they realize it's him. Uh, the scene ends and we don't know who he is. Kyle O'Reilly Kyle and Von Wagner defeat Legado Del Fantasma, Rayo Ray Mendoza, and Jackie Wilde with Electro uh, Lopez and Santos Escobar. Not sure what the big deal is here uh, as how... Uh, the whole Legato team still has jobs when other people are cut. I don't really understand. Anyway, Wagner pins Wild in a match that didn't need to be here. It was pretty boring for the majority, and the winners go on to challenge Imperium on Sunday for the NXT Tag Team Championship, which I didn't even know who held it, and I don't, and I do watch the show every week. Uh, and then, so, there is... Decent enough wrestling in it, and the, there's Channel Changers. Zion Quinn makes their way out to ringside. Show goes to commercial, and uh, O'Reilly is really decent, but he's fallen off from where he used to be. Uh, anyway, this is kind of an old school throwback, and then after commercial break, Quinn brawls with Escobar, as they go off camera, O'Reilly is worked over until he makes a tag to Wagner because Wagner needs to be the guy they're pushing, even though O'Reilly is a million times better. House cleaning by Wagner. Heels bump and feed for him all over the place. Mendoza is uh, uh, pretty well. He does a missile drop kick and cuts off Wagner in the process. O'Reilly trades strikes with Wild, and then they trade counters. In the probably best sequence of the match, and Wagner, it's a low bridge, breaks up the heel team's finish. Double team moves by Wagner and O'Reilly, and the this concludes the combination. Wagner then pins Wild to win the contest. 
Wagner and O'Reilly win the match, earning a title shot at War Games card where they challenge Imperium. Not exactly my idea of a good thing, but I assume we'll have new champions. Anyway, another Tiffany Stratton uh, vignette. She's rich. We don't see her face, but we know she's rich. Anyway, so Joe Gacy's all-inclusive invitational. Uh... Long promo, last way, last way too long. Anyway, um, does an exhibition style match. Gacy runs a gauntlet, facing three enhancement talents, beating up uh, a bunch of them. Gacy is about to wrestle a woman, since it's all inclusive, but that isn't allowed. Michael uh, Malcolm Bivens interrupts, saying that the segment is um, not very good. In other words, he also has a diamond mind with him, and that includes Roderick Strong. Gacy has a match on Sunday, and will challenge Strong in a championship match that I assume Strong will lose. Anyway, Bivens cuts promo on Gacy, and Gacy says he wants to talk to Strong. One-on-one, -on -one, Strong gets in the ring to face Gacy. Strong says he's tired of talking, and he nails Gacy with a punch. Gacy... He hits a counter and does a handspring into the ropes like he's, I don't know, somebody who does a bunch of high-flying stuff. Solo Sokoa is being interviewed by Mackenzie Mitchell. Sokoa is confronted by Boa. Sokoa um, tells Boa that he is on his own because Sokoa cannot speak Boa's language and then... Uh, this is just a flat segment. Anyway, so, so Sokoa defeats Endos, Endos, or Enrolls, or whatever. I, I mean, these names are just horrible. Uh, Enof is introduced with a vignette earlier in the show, beaten clean in the middle because we beat new talents. Uh, Enof gets a decent enough entrance and wins, like, or loses like he is somebody, at least from that point. Enoff gets to shine a bit, but Sokoa cuts him off with a Samoa drop. Sokoa then leaps from the top rope with a superfly splash and gets the pinfall win. Boa runs in after the match, attacking Sokoa. Boa applies a death grip like Ming, and Sokoa is trapped. Uh, Enoff then jumps in to make the save and then gets caught with a death grip. Sokoa then manages to run off Boa. Anyway, Indy Hartwell gets a call from the hospital saying Dexter Loomis is missing. Pira Parata then uh, tells Hartwell that their match is up next. There's no real time to worry about the missing husband. There's wrestling to be done here. Anyway, so Electra Lopez is outside the building having an enchanted moment or something. She wishes that he could fight with Escobar, but she wishes Quinn luck in his upcoming match. And we're supposed to care. Indy Hartwell and Perota versus uh, Yoshia Leon and Velvetina Fons. Hartwell is distracted again. So basically, she's not a very good wrestler because, well, uh, she's constantly distracted with what's going on with her storyline husband and it's just anyway uh loomis is missing from the hospital for at least a week hartwell does the match to wrestle and the match is pretty simple sit out cutter cutter bomb and hartwell and perosa win and uh vignette introducing draco anthony he's in a cafe He's drinking coffee. Anthony says his actions speak louder than his words. Uh, vignette really doesn't do anything there. Um, so we get to the main event, thankfully. Braun Breaker defeats Johnny Gargano in a ladder match to win the War Games Advantage. Uh, Gargano against Breaker in a ladder match with no real build, but what do we care about build? Uh, this reminds me of the end of WCW. Uh, the booking doesn't matter because they're a multi-million dollar company and nobody cares. They assume that the million to two million people they have watching is the best they can do and they no longer care. Anyway, 
Uh, the women's match, ladder match in the show has some interesting spots. These guys are trying to be, um, you know, a little more um, psychology-based. Breaker looks strong, and Gargano looks like he's trying to outsmart him, tries to climb the ladder. Tope by Gargano and sends Breaker over the announce desk just before the show cuts to a commercial. Brawling at ringside continues, and Gargano drags the ladder back into the ring. Gargano then shoves a ladder over, and Breaker's supposed to take some sort of huge bump, but it doesn't happen. He messes up, and um, anyway, no one will remember this in a week because no one remembers wrestling these days. Anyway, Breaker is has an overhead belly-to-belly -belly suplex. Steiner suplex sends Gargano crashing into the ladder. Breaker then goes for flying elbow drop off the ropes, but misses completely. Breaker then is uh, rammed face first into the ladder. Ladder is perched on the top rope. Breaker then lifts the ladder with Gargano on it. Leads to a Terry Funk uh, spinning um, ladder on the head spot from the Barely Legal Pay-per-view back when wrestling was good, but Braun Breaker is doing the Cherry Funk impression. Gargano is uh, setting up for a super flex, but um, then there's a middle finger salute like this is Steve Austin. Breaker comes back with a super Frankensteiner off the top turnbuckle. Breaker then sets up a ladder, but Gargano cuts him off, and they fight atop the ladder, and Breaker is smacked in the face by... A hanging briefcase breaker manages to pull Gargano off the ladder. Breaker then catches Gargano in midair to deliver the power slam. Breaker then unhooks the briefcase to win the match. Team 2.0 now gets the advantage. Black and Gold gets the advantage. And that closes this dreadful NXT show. We'll be back with more right after this. <laughs> 